Hi, I'm Nick Moffat with Verisurf Software. Today I'll show you how to use the Romer Absolute Arm with Verisurf Metrology Software to align, inspect, build, analyze, and reverse engineer parts and assemblies. The Romer Arm has a number of unique characteristics. Absolute encoders allow you to switch on and measure without having to initialize the arm. A zero-g counterbalance helps to reduce fatigue and improves measurement accuracy. The smart lock system holds the arm in any position when it's not in use. The arm uses a TESA mount for quick probe changes without having to requalify. Absolute arms come in measuring ranges from 1.5 to 4.5 meters. Finally, interchangeable feature packs allow you to upgrade the arm at any time. For example, this feature pack enables battery operation and Wi-Fi communication. These are just some of the highlights of the Romer hardware. Next, we'll look at the software. Verisurf's metrology software is built on a CAD platform, giving it full CAD design capabilities. CAD is required for reverse engineering, but it's also very helpful when inspecting complex parts. For example, we can analyze the model, we can pull dimensions from the model. We can even manipulate the model. In addition, CAD tools such as colors, levels, and attributes allow us to manage large part assemblies. Verisurf integrates design, inspection, layout, analysis, and reverse engineering all into a single application. Finally, Verisurf is designed for both print and model-based workflows. I'll continue by loading a CAD model of our demo part. Verisurf reads all popular CAD files, CATIA, NX, SOLIDWORKS, etc. in their native format. This helps to avoid the limitations of neutral formats such as STEP and IGES, which Verisurf can also read. When we open a native file, Verisurf saves it in the MCX format and leaves the original file intact. All the data, including the model, the measurements, the analyses, and the reports, are stored in a single file to simplify handling and to prevent data loss. I'll choose the MCX format and open our demo part file. The part is in place and the model is loaded. In the next step, we'll align the arm to the part. After we load the model, we typically align the device to the part so we can get real-time feedback on tolerance condition. We'll use auto-align since it's the easiest way to align to a model. We start by placing alignment targets on the model in order to control the orientation of the part. I'll choose Create Target and place alignment targets on the top, front, and side of the model. I'll then choose Run Auto Align and measure the targets as they're highlighted. After the last target is measured, Verisurf aligns the device using a best fit and displays the results dialog. We can review the results and modify the fit if necessary, but since the results look good, we'll choose to accept. When we do, Verisurf runs inspect build so we can verify the alignment. The small deviations we see as I move the probe around the part indicate a good fit between the model and the part, which means our alignment is correct. This final check is a validation of the whole alignment workflow because it shows we had the right part, the right model, and we didn't make any mistakes measuring the part. Auto-align is a very powerful tool for model-based alignment, but it's simple enough for beginners to use. Plus, the results are easily verified using inspect mode. The arm is now aligned to the part. In the next step, we'll check surface profile.
In the previous step, we used Inspect Build mode to verify our device alignment. Inspect Build is a special measuring mode that displays in real time the deviations between a part and the corresponding features in a CAD model. When we're inspecting a part, the deviation reflects the material condition. When removing a part into position, the deviation shows us how far to move and the arrow indicates the direction. Since the arm is already aligned to the part, when we check profile, we'll assume the deviations are due to machining errors in the part. I'll continue by measuring deviations on the top in single point mode. Notice how the deviations are represented using an arrow in deviation text. Next, I'll switch to continuous mode and scan deviations around the part. When I press Escape, Verisurf creates an analysis object in the data tree. If I highlight the object, we can see the distribution of deviations in the color bar. If I double-click the analysis, we can change the way deviations are displayed. For example, we can add borders to the text. We can change from lines to spheres. And if we use MBD tolerance, Verisurf analyzes the data to the tolerance callout for each surface. Otherwise, it uses the global profile tolerance. I'll go back to our original display and save the result. Next, I'll add balloons to annotate the deviations. I'll apply the balloons to a random 10 points. If necessary, we can rearrange the balloons manually. I'll save the result, highlight the analysis, and create a report. I like the screenshot on top, so I'll change the order. I'll also open the settings dialog and change the logo from Verisurf to Roamer. We can output the results in a number of formats, including PDF, Excel, Word, etc. I prefer PDF, so we'll leave it there. When we create the report, we see the Roamer logo in the header, we see the annotated screenshot, and we see the details in the body of the report. We've just seen how to use real-time deviation analysis to inspect profile. In the next step, we'll use it to position our demo part. When we use build mode to position a part, we assume the form of the part is good and the deviations are due to errors in the position of the part. We refer to this use of real-time deviation analysis as build mode because we often use it to build fixtures and assemblies, but we can use it any time we want to position an object in 3D space. We'd normally start by aligning the device to the basis of the CAD model by measuring features with known CAD values. We did this in auto-align. We'd then build parts into position by moving them to their nominal locations. Since the arm is already aligned to the basis of the CAD model, I'll simply move the part and build it back into position. I'll select and build to circles first because that's a quick way of getting the part close. I'll place the probe in the hole and move the part in the direction of the arrow. I'll then cancel the selection, display the MBD, and build to surfaces. I've enabled Use MBD Tolerance so we can use surface profile to control the build tolerance. In other words, as long as the part is positioned within the profile tolerance, we'll consider that it's in the right location. It's not necessary to build to zero, we just want the part positioned within tolerance. This is much closer than I need to be for this step because we want the part out for the next step. Let's 
green everywhere, so we'll call it good. This is a very simple example of a build application. Positioning a part in three dimensions is much more complicated, but the process is essentially the same. We've now positioned the part to within tolerance. For the next step, we want it slightly out of alignment, so I'll move it a little bit. We've used inspect mode to check our part in real time. In the next step, we'll perform a similar analysis, but we'll start by measuring point clouds. I'll begin by running inspect mode to verify our device alignment. We know that the part's good because we've already inspected it, and we know the alignment's bad because we left it that way at the end of build mode. I'll switch to point collection and scan point clouds around the part. We're not getting real-time deviation analysis. We're simply collecting raw probe center data. When I'm done measuring, I'll press Escape, select the Analysis tab, and analyze the point clouds. The results are similar to what we saw in Inspect mode, but the deviations are much larger because of our intentional misalignment. I'll hide the analysis, select the point clouds, and run Best Fit. Before I run the fit, I'll analyze the data for a baseline analysis. When the fit is complete, the results show the part is good, similar to what we saw in inspect mode. I'll choose OK and apply the best fit. If I toggle between the before and after best fit, we can see the improvement. I'll select the measure tab and run inspect mode. We can see from the small deviations that the best fit is applied to the device alignment as well. Inspect mode, which we saw earlier, and analysis, which we just performed, are very powerful tools for model-based inspection. In the next step, we'll measure and analyze prismatic features. All of the workflows we've seen so far have been model-based. We've aligned to a model, we've inspected and analyzed to a model, and we've built to a model. Next, we'll look at print-based inspection and reporting of prismatic features. I'll align to the part frame shown here, but since we're not using a model, I'll open a new file. I'll begin by measuring a plane in two lines for our alignment. Next, I'll run Feature Align. We can see that the origin is located at the intersection of the two lines, so our data is aligned correctly. If I place the probe at the origin, we can see the device is aligned as well. I'll continue by measuring features, starting with a large circle. Next, I'll measure a slot. I'll switch to continuous mode and scan the cone. I'll continue by measuring the hole pattern in single point mode. Finally, I'll switch to point mode and measure four points on the left plane.
I'll then switch to continuous mode and scan the plane on the right side. I'll fit planes to the points and clouds. Right click, choose fit plane, and do the same with the point cloud. All of the features that we've measured are displayed in the data tree. If I highlight a feature, we can see its characteristics, such as its size, shape, position, and form. If I highlight two features, we can see the relationship between them, such as the distance between two points, or the angle and distance between two planes. We've seen how Verisurf and the Romer arm measure prismatic geometry. Next, we'll see how to analyze and report the results. We briefly saw the report manager when we reported our inspection results. Next, we'll take a closer look as we analyze and report our measured features. For the report, I'll select the circles of the whole pattern in the end planes. When I choose the Reports button, the features are displayed in the Report Manager. If I highlight a feature, we see its characteristics displayed in the Details pane. We use these fields to enter the nominal and tolerance values. I'll enter the nominals for Circle 3 so we can report its position. The toolbars allow us to add nominal features, to construct features, and to add GD&T callouts to the report. I'll use them to construct the plane and then the circle through the whole pattern. I'll start by selecting the circles and then choose Construct Plane. With the circle still highlighted, I'll choose Construct Circle. However, I know that Circle 6 is bad, so I'll remove it from the fit. I'll then rename the circle to Center. Next, I'll construct lines from the center to circles 3 and 4. I'll then highlight the lines, calculate the angle between them, and enter the nominal value. I'll calculate the distance from the center to circle 6 and enter its nominal value. It should be 1 inch so we can see it significantly off. I can select the end planes and calculate their parallelism, and I can report the concentricity of circle 2 to the whole pattern. Finally, I'll report the position of circle 3. For the report, I want only the final values, so I'll highlight them before I create the file. When I choose Report, we see the Romer logo in the header, and we see the details in the body of the report. This was a very simple report, but it demonstrates constructions and the use of GD&T. Earlier, I referred to the measurement, analysis, and reporting of prismatic features as a print-based workflow, but it works equally well, if not better, with a CAD model. For our final example, we'll discuss reverse engineering. Verisurf's reverse engineering tools enable mixed modeling with prismatic features, meshes, NURB surfaces, and solids. Moreover, we can take advantage of the many CAD tools inside Verisurf. For this demonstration, I'll scan and reverse engineer some contour on the top of the demo part. Unfortunately, this part doesn't have much to work with, so I'll use the Verisurf demo part instead. To begin, I'll open a new file and align the device to give our data some context. Next, I'll run Feature Align. I'll select point mode and scan the top of the part.
When I'm done measuring, I'll select the Reverse tab, highlight the cloud, and choose Patch. The parameters allow us to control the accuracy and complexity of the surface. I'll verify that the probe offset is correct and then create the surface. When the results are displayed, we can see the values are in range, so we'll accept the surface. We now have a surface that the parameters indicate as good, but how can we verify the results? On the Measure tab, we can run Inspect Build and compare the surface to the part. On the Analysis tab, we can analyze the points to the surface. The data from the absolute arm is traceable, so we have a way of proving the accuracy of our surface. This is a very powerful capability of an integrated metrology solution. This was a very simple example of reverse engineering, but it shows how easy it is to create and to verify CAD surfaces. That concludes the presentation. I hope I've given you a good appreciation for how Verisurf Metrology software enables the Romer Absolute Arm with a complete set of model-based tools for alignment, inspection, tool building, analysis, and reverse engineering. For more information or to schedule a demonstration, please call us at 888-713-7201 or email us at sales at verisurf.com.